Hello again and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. Oh, hello everyone, it's Fafa Gilbert of Ndu Dubai Fafa and welcome to the Creative African Cooking channel. Have you subscribed yet? If you haven't, can you please click that subscribe button like now? And you know that bell next to it, the notification button, ding dong, yes, just hit that bell. It gives you VIP access. What that means is if you get upload a video straight to your email address, no wahala. Straight, like straight line, yes. Mm -hmm. Do so. <laughs> now let's start cooking. So what I do have here is my goat meat and I'm actually adding my holy grail of spices which is my blended ginger, aniseed and onion. Now I've not even actually introduced this dish. Mm, I think you have to watch to the end to find out exactly what I'm actually making today. Do you have a clue yet? <laughs> I'm such a tease. <laughs> anyway, so I'm marinating my goat meat in this beautiful blend of spices, which is always my holy grail to go to. Absolutely. And um, yes, you can marinate it in the fridge for a minimum of an hour. Or better still, you can marinate it overnight. Now, it's best actually marinate this in the fridge overnight um, if you're actually preparing yourself to cook the next day. So that actually saves you time. Naturally, marinating your meat means that you're actually introducing flavors to your meat. And that would actually allow the flavors to permeate into the fibers of the meat. So you know when you actually bite into the meat, you know, it becomes moist. And then it's just this flavor that's just oozing, oozing, yes. <laughs> anyway, I still haven't told you what I'm making, oh. Yo, let's continue. We're going straight, straight. Anyway, so now that you've marinated your meat, you need to actually cook it. So I've just added some habanero chili to it, which will give this beautiful aromatic flavor. And on a very low, low heat, your lowest setting that is, just steam your meat. I'm not adding any water and it will steam in its own juice for about 45 minutes. Now it's time to actually move to our next step. So now you have got a clue as to what I'm making today. <laughs> right. So now you actually need to thinly slice your okra. You can actually dice it finely. You can actually just thinly slice it into those beautiful ringlets as you can see here. Now do take all necessary precautions when you're actually dealing with your knife and especially, you know, when you're chopping and um, just make sure you don't hurt yourself because me now I was hungry when I was actually making this dish. So I wanted it to be quick, quick, quick. So that to myself would have just really been an inconvenience that I definitely wouldn't have actually appreciated at all. <laughs> so repeat the process and chop all your okra and now we move to the next step. Bear in mind, I was still hungry when I was cooking this, so so then I put my saucepan and some oil um, on the medium heat. Then I added my sliced onions, and of course, I'm going to be frying this for about two to three minutes. Yet again, to allow some infusions to take place. Una unza. <laughs> so now that my onions actually fried for about two to three minutes, I'm actually going to add my steamed goat meat, as you can see here, and I'm just going to fry it all together for about four to five minutes. Now I'm building upon the infusions of flavors here. So I'm actually just adding a little bit of my blended onion, aniseed and ginger mix that I marinated the goat meat and steam in. And this is just to revive the flavor again. So of course, this is within the five minutes of frying this um, beautiful goat meat. So, you know, you can see the infusions where it's going. Now me, I don't like waste. So if you've actually watched my lamb stew recipe, I had a little bit left and I added a little bit of tin tomato or we call tomato puree and I'm actually just frying this and mixing everything together so I'm just gonna fry this for about seven minutes just to allow the infusions to take place <laughs> So at this point, add your habanero chili. Fifia ko pa tadi ko kwedo nude. Nonto na fry mixture for about five minutes. Yes, what did I just say? I said just add your habanero chili and fry it for about five minutes. 
Now at this point, I'm actually going to be adding my chopped okra because I'm gonna build up on the flavors. So I'm gonna add it to it and I'm gonna fry it just for another three minutes. So it's just like this beautiful tomato sauce that is actually just rich in spices infused with the goat meat. And now I'm actually adding the okra and I'm just mixing it and mixing it. You know, you can see, say that I've got enough time. Mina, I did say I was hungry when I was actually filming this. So anyway, moving on. Now, what I do is, whenever I blend anything in my blender, I rinse my blender and I reserve the water because it's flavored water. Nothing goes to waste in my kitchen. So that's exactly what I'm actually adding to my soup. So it's everything that I've actually blended for the soup that I've actually rinsed and I've just added it. Now to that, I'm actually going to add some bicarbonate soda, which would actually activate the mycologenous nature of the okra. Now you can omit the bicarbonate soda out of this recipe, but what you can do is actually using your food processor is actually blend your okra and that would equally activate the mycologenous nature as well. Now the advantage of also adding the bicarbonate soda is it allows the okra to actually retain its greenness, you know, and it's all about the colors and infusions with me, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. So I've just added a little bit more water because I need it thin and I think I like the consistency now. At this point, my soup is almost done, but do you think I'm done? Oh, no, no, no. So now I had some tilapia in the fridge, so I actually fried my tilapia so it was a little bit crispy. And now I'm actually going to add my tilapia to my soup. At this point, all I could think of was just infusions. Because tilapia in okra soup, mm, it's like my femme favorite. The flavor alone is just incredible. And then you've got the goat meat, which gives you this extra different texture. Chale, this soup, you know, be, you know, be easy soup. But you see, that's the thing I like about okra soup. Okra soup is so versatile in terms of how you make it. And I love that. You know, there's so many recipes when it comes to okra, but I'll tell you what, I just love each and every one that I make, you know? And yes, so now, of course, I'm actually adding my chilies. And um, you're like, yes, it's too much chili, but actually I'm just leaving it whole. So as and when, if somebody actually wants a really spicy, they can break that in. But I love the colors that the chili also adds to the soup. Am I done? Mm, yeah, I'm sure you would think, wouldn't you know? And I'm actually going to bring this to the boil uh, for about five minutes. And whilst this is actually coming to the boil, guess what? It's almost done. So I have to add my texture. So of course, I've actually got my sliced onions that are going in. Yes, because I love it when I'm actually, you know, having a bit of a soup and I bite into a lovely crunchy onion, which is just al dente. Mm -hmm. I am describing some food here, aren't I? <laughs> now, I did say I'm getting there. Yes, so I'm adding my salt to taste as you do. And then some more chilies. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, these, the chilies actually here in the UK, they're not that hot, honestly. Because if it was a really hot one, I'm sure I'd just use one. And of course, I've just added a little bit of my ginger and aniseed and onion mix just to finish this off. And then... I've actually moved on to add something else. This soup is like the never-ending soup, right? Okay, I promise you, it's going to end because me now, I'm hungry. <laughs> So at this point, I've actually reduced the heat under my soup because what I'm actually going to add now are my prawns. And I'm just going to use the residual heat to actually cook the prawns. Because one thing I don't like is rubbery prawns. I like my prawns to be juicy. So just when my soup is almost done, I add my prawns and then I actually switch the heat off and that residual heat would cook my prawns just perfectly. <laughs> Yes, so now my soup is finally cooked. Now, can you guess what I actually had it with? I just had it on its own because it was quite late by the time I finished making the soup. But you can actually have it with your eba, your akbla, and all recipes I'm in previous videos, and I'll leave a link at the top for you. Now, I'll leave a list of ingredients, including the measurements, on my blog, indudubaiforfa.blogspot.com, so do check it out. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as indudubaiforfa, so do say hi. Until next time, take care of you, be nice, be beautiful, be you, and I love you. Thank you.